Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum all my dear friends and English literature aspirants. This is your host Samia Umar and you're watching MA English Part 1 and 2 Notes. Students, today we are going to study Modern Drama Life of Galileo written by Bertolt Brecht. Ji, ye drama included hai MA English Part 2 ke syllabus mein. Iska text bhi aap logon ne cover karna hai. Firstly, we will read about the author of this book. Brecht is the key figure of our time and all theatre work today at some point starts or returns to his statements and achievements. Peter Brook, theatre director, ne ye baat kahi thi Brecht se mutalik. Aur ye kafi had tak sahi baat hai. Um, Brecht ki aapko picture nazar aari hai screen pe. मैं आपको बताती चलूँ कि लाइफ ऑफ गैलीलियो की जगह आप द सी बाय एडवर्ड बॉन्ड भी ऑप्ट कर सकते हैं आपकी मर्जी है कि आप इनमें से कौन सा ड्रामा चूज़ करते हैं फॉर एम इंग्लिश पार्ट टू जी ड्रामे की समरी पढ़ने से पहले हम ऑथर की थोड़ी सी बायोग्राफी पढ़ेंगे और ये जानना लिटरेचर स्टूडेंट्स के लिए बहुत ज़रूरी है कि ऑथर की एज क्या थी ऑल्सो अबाउट हिज लाइफ सो लेट्स रीड अबाउट Bertolt Brecht Bertolt Brecht was born in Germany in 1898 and died age 58 in 1956 he was a poet playwright and theater director his most famous plays include life of galileo mother courage and her children and the caucasian chalk circle brecht's groundbreaking directing style has been hugely influential to many directors and designers over the decades playwright david edger once said brecht is part of the air we breathe brecht's work was very popular in the 50s 60s and 70s but he is slightly less fashionable today however his influence is still present in much of theater and many would agree that brecht changed the face of modern theater Now we are going to discuss detailed summary and analysis of life of Galileo by Bertolt Brecht. Uh, ये analysis बहुत ज़रूरी होता है ताकि आपको concept clear हो जाए और कोई भी questions आ जाएँ तो आप अपने words में भी लिख सकते हैं So let's start life of Galileo. Detailed scene wise summary, scenes वन to टू summary. Scene वन Galileo is in a study. Andrea the boy of his housekeeper arrives with a gift from the court of Naples it is an astronomical model galileo dismisses it as an antique andrea wants to learn more about it so galileo gives him a lesson and has him describe the various spheres representing planets stars etc and the center is the earth around which all other heavenly bodies spin this geocentric model of the universe galileo tells us has been believed for over 200 years he compares it to a cage Galileo states that this idea is changing however it began when ships started to stray from coast and explore the oceans a millennium of faith is becoming a millennium of doubt Galileo predicts everyone will know that the earth is the body that's rotating and people along with it and not the sun Andrea thinks Galileo is off again not making sense Andrea says he knows the sun is moving because he can see it pass through the sky every day. Galileo proves otherwise by setting Andrea down and then picking up his chair and rotating the boy around an iron wash stand symbolizing the sun. Andrea sees that he moved and not the wash stand sun. Mrs. Surti, the housekeeper and Andrea's mother catches Galileo and scolds the man for putting crazy ideas in Andrea's head. Galileo tells Andrea that he shouldn't talk about Galileo's ideas outside because certain of the authorities won't like it. A young man Ludovico visits Galileo. He has been sent to study science under Galileo for 30 scudi a month. Ludovico admits he knows nothing about science and that his specialty is actually horses. However, Lodovico tells Galileo about a wondrous new device he saw in Amsterdam, a tube capped by glass lenses through which everything appears much larger. Galileo becomes interested and sketches out the design with Lodovico's help. 
Though Galileo does not suffer fools gladly, he needs the money and agrees to tutor Lodovico. He then has Andrea go to the local lens maker and buy two powerful lenses. A curator, Priuli, arrives and informs Galileo he cannot offer him an honorarium badly needed money because Galileo's current theories and research astronomy have little real world value or use. Galileo states that he may have something for Prioli with plenty of real world value. Prioli leaves and Andrea arrives with the lenses. Galileo holds them in his hands towards the window. Through them, Andrea, then Galileo can make out tiny details from houses many yards away. Scene 2. Galileo along with his daughter Virginia and friend Sagredo are at an official function along with the senators of Venice. They are near the Venice harbour where a great many ships are gathered. Prioli introduces Galileo and Galileo informs the senators about his new invention, the telescope, which he claims he has been working on a long 17 years. Galileo believes the telescope will be invaluable to the Venetian Navy because sailors using telescopes will be able to see enemy ships well before the enemy ship can see them. Virginia presents the telescope to the senators on a cushion. There is a much applause and praise for Galileo. Prioli assures Galileo that the telescope is worth at least 500 scudi a year. Galileo's money problems are apparently solved. As the senators marvel at the telescope, Galileo tells Sagredo that he has already found out two things about the universe by using the telescope. The moon does not give off its own light and out of what the Milky Way galaxy is composed. A man named Matti approaches Galileo and wishes to lure him away from the Venice in order to invent things for Florence. Galileo states he can draw up a copy of the telescope from Matti but he does not have the time or inclination to work for Florence. Scenes 1-2 to two Analysis the introduction of the geocentric astronomical model is a very visual way of demonstrating the main thrust of the drama to follow, that of Galileo's heliocentric model of the universe and the conflict it creates. Galileo compares the geocentric model to as aristocracy, the notion that the aristocracy believe that are at the center of society and that everyone else revolves around them. Therefore, Galileo's heliocentric model will not only be a revolution in science, it will be a revolution in the social order. Given the Blairite Bertrand Bracht's Marxist views, it is not surprising that Bracht would be interested in introducing class and the toppling of the aristocracy in with Galileo's scientific achievement. Galileo's brand discourse with the young student Lodovico, whom Galileo almost dismisses, helps to characterize Galileo as an old crank a cantankerous grump who has little patience for those of lesser intellect and learning. However, Galileo takes the time to teach his housekeeper's boy, Andrea, about the universe, so already there are several sides to Galileo. Galileo is also deceptive, shrewd, and pragmatic. He claims the invention of the telescope, which he heard from Lodovico, for himself claiming it took him a long 17 years to accomplish, he has presented the telescope not for the glory and advantage of the Venetian Navy, which he claims in scene 2, but for money. Scenes 3 to 4, scenes 3 to 4 summary. Scene 3, Galileo is with his friend Sagredo at home as both take turns looking through a telescope. Visual evidence points to no other conclusion but that the moon has peaks and valleys just like the earth, which is unheard of. Galileo states that to an observer on the moon, the earth would appear sometimes like a crescent, sometimes like half a circle, just as the moon does to those on earth. Prioli visits Galileo's so-called invention, the telescope, has arrived by the boat land to Venice and will be paddled on every street corner starting in the morning for a mere two scudi. The Venetian senators will be furious when they realize their naval advantage is something everyone in Europe has. Prioli is hurt and feels swindled by Galileo got his money. Galileo states that he may be on to something even more valuable than the telescope, that he is making sense of the movement of the stars and may come up with a way to tell time based on the movements of the stars. Prioli leaves in a huff. Galileo defends his actions to Sagredo, stating he need, uh, needed the money and his daughter Virginia needs a dowry. 
observing points of light around Jupiter, referring to charts, Galileo and Segredo come to the conclusion that there must be satellites orbiting Jupiter, as if Jupiter was another Earth and there were other moons. This means that the 2000 years old model of the cosmos that are fixed spheres encircling the Earth is false. Sagredo is astounded and asks Galileo where God is in this new system of understanding. Galileo states he is a mathematician, not a theologian. Sagredo warns that Galileo's theories are downright dangerous to Galileo and that 10 years ago a man named Bruno was burned at the stake for espousing similar views. Galileo is not buried. Later, Galileo states that he may take up Matty's offer after all and go to Florence. He has written a formal letter to the Medicis of Florence asking to join their court. This would provide a cushy job for Galileo. This makes Segredo very worried. Monks control the Florence court and Galileo's view of the universe amounts to sacrilege. Segredo fears Galileo will be burnt at the stake, but Galileo is intent on Florence. Scene 4 Some time has passed and Galileo is now in a new home in Florence. He is by his telescope attended by many court members including the young prince Medici, a boy of nine, a philosopher, a mathematician, several attending ladies and Lord Chamberlain. Andrea and Mrs. Sarthi are also in attendance, along with a new servant of Galileo's, an old man named Fadrasoni. The philosopher states that Aristotle has laid down a harmonious, perfect view of the universe and now Galileo is attempting to introduce chaos and disharmony into such a perfect tradition. Galileo keeps his responses diplomatic and subservient, merely asking if the prince or anyone else would like to see the moons of Jupiter through his telescope. The mathematician mentions the possibility that the telescope is defective and may not be depicting what Galileo thinks it is. They again charge that Galileo is trying to destroy 2000 years of perfectly fine tradition given to them by the unquestionable Aristotle. Galileo doesn't see the sense in defending shaken teachings and states that his time with the sailors of Venice deep at sea has taught him a great many things about the sky. The philosopher dismisses the sailors for their low class. In the end, the young prince is whisked away to another engagement and no one in the prince's retinue has dared look through the telescope. The Lord Chamberlain informs Galileo that they will get the opinion from the preeminent astronomer Christopher Clavius in regards to Galileo and his theories. Scenes 3 to 4 Analysis Scenes 3 and 4 accelerate and sharpen the drama by demonstrating exactly what Galileo is up against in regards to his revolutionary theories. Sagredo in scene 3 confides his fear and anxiety about Galileo's future safety and mentions Bruno, who was burned at the stake 10 years earlier for holding similar views about the cosmos. The mention of Bruno and his manner of execution provides a very real threat for the audience to digest. Priuli's entrance in scene 3 and his half about Galileo's ruse concerning the telescope provides some comic relief and a lighter moment in what is otherwise a serious and cerebral scene. The character of Sagredo further allows the audience to understand the theological consequences for Galileo's theories in the context of the 17th century. That man is not the center of the universe is a concept which is anathema to contemporary Christian thought of Galileo's day. Why would God have sent his only son to a planet like many other planets twirling on the edge of the universe? We are seen three foreshadows and predicts conflict in Florence. Scene 4 makes the conflict real. Galileo is truly challenged on his views for the first time. With scene 4 comes the sense of flow ingrained the old idea of the universe is. For the philosopher and mathematician defending the status quo, this truth is a dangerous notion that can lead anywhere, including presumably to the devil and away from God. There is also a class issue. When Galileo contends that he learned many important things from sailors, he is more easily dismissed because of the low status of who he interacted with and learned from. Scenes 5 to 6. Scenes 5 to 6. Summary. Scene 5. Now at the Papal College in Rome, Galileo is outside waiting upon the judgment of the most trusted astronomer, Christopher Clavius. He must suffer through various monks, prelates and scholars making fun of his theory. They chide Mother Earth for drinking too much and physically act out what they imagine life would be like on a moving Earth. 
an old cardinal emerges and dispensing with the frivolity of the lower church member members calls galileo a slave of a multiplication table and an enemy of mankind for his heliocentric model when introduced to galileo the old cardinal omniesti sees a resemblance in galileo to bruno the man burned at the stake the old cardinal then launches into a diatribe stating he simply won't tolerate galileo's theory and that the one and true god places man at the center of the universe Christopher Clavius emerges from seclusion and announces that Galileo is correct in his views. The old cardinal is spared from hearing Clavius' pronouncement and is whisked away by his handlers. A little monk tells Galileo that now the theologians will have to set the heavens right again. Scene 6. The scene is Cardinal Bellarmine's house. Bellarmine is having a party and has invited Galileo. Everything seems festive and relaxed. Galileo is with his now teenage daughter Virginia, who is promised to Ludovico, his old student. Galileo is introduced to Bellarmine and another cardinal, Barberini, who exchange witticisms and, and proverbs from the Bible with Galileo, who is up to the task. Then Bellarmine asks Galileo how man, the created, could come to know the truth about God, the creator, in terms of how God created the universe. Galileo states that man can be blind to what the Bible means just as man can be blind to what the sky and the stars mean. This crosses the line. Bellarmine sternly reminds Galileo that it is the church that interprets the Bible and not a layman like Galileo. At this time, Bellarmine also officially warns Galileo against doing anything further with his heliocentric model. A secretary is there to transcribe the conversation and make it official. Galileo tries to protest, but Bellarmine is firm, stating that science must be subservient to the church and that there are things man is not meant to know. In the last section of the scene, the church inquisitor speaks with daughter Virginia and in a polite but subtly menacing way tells her she should look after her father and reign in his imagination. Scenes 5 to 6 Analysis Whereas in scene 4, Galileo was receiving resistance to ideas from the court and aristocracy, scene 5 shows Galileo receiving even more fervent and threatening resistance from the church hierarchy. Those on the lower ranks of the church hierarchy, the monks and prelates, roundly and childishly mock Galileo, physically acting out a scenario in which the earth is moving beneath their feet like a log rolling in water. In contrast, the old cardinal reacts with disgust and righteous anger, believing Galileo to mock the very God who has provided for him. At the end of scene 5, Clavius emerges and states that Galileo is extracting the correct truths from his telescope observations. The old cardinal is taken home and spared from the knowledge, demonstrating that the old guard of the church is wholly unprepared for Galileo's revelations. The scene ends with the little monk ominously stating that it is now time for the theologians to set the heavens right again, meaning that the church will go to war with Galileo. Scene 6 has a rather dramatic sharp turn in the middle. The first half is full of festiveness and gaiety. Galileo appears to be the toast of the town. His daughter is grown up and betrothed to Ludovico. And Galileo's exchanges with the church representatives, Ballerman and Barberini, seems to be light and harmless as they exchange proverbs. However, Galileo crosses a line when he infers that the church is blind to the true meaning of the Bible, just as they are to the true meaning of the sky. Bellarmine strongly reminds Galileo that it is not his place to interpret the Bible, and thereafter Galileo is officially warned in front of secretaries against furthering his heliocentric model of the universe. The Inquisitor's final dialogue with Virginia is ominous in that it indicates that only not only Galileo but his family is in danger. Virginia is urged to stay with her father and tend to him. The implicit threat is clear that there are consequences for the family should Galileo remain untethered with his dangerous thinking. Scene 7 to 8. Scene 7 to 8 summary. Scene 7. The little monk from scene 5 visits Galileo and informs him that he has given up his career as a physicist in light of Galileo's recent re discoveries. Little Monk tells the stories of his poor family in Campania who grows olives. This hand-to-mouth existence is all they have known. 
Little Monk believes that his family continues to suffer and toil because they believe that God watches over them, has a plan for them, and promises to reward their suffering. Galileo's work threatens this very belief, and Little Monk believes that the comfort provided by God or the belief of God is worth more than discovering the physics of the universe. Galileo responds that technology and knowledge could bring Little Monk's family and others like them to even greater heights of happiness and prosperity. He gives the example of the irrigation technology he invented, something that could truly help Little Monk's family. However, Little Monk's family must help themselves. Galileo contends that they must strive for knowledge, for knowledge to benefit them. Frustrated Galileo shows Little Monk a manuscript describing what makes the ocean ebb and flow, the moon. Little Monk, despite himself, is captivated and begins to read the manuscript. Galileo ribs him for his blasphemy and wonders how long he, Galileo, can stay silent to the public about what he knows. The scene ends with Galileo helping Little Monk decipher the manuscript. Scene 8 Eight years have passed. In Galileo's home, the same servants help Galileo with a new experiment. Galileo has abundant astronomy. His nearby telescope has a cloth over it and is instead investigating why certain objects flow in water and others sink. The director of the university, the philosopher of scene 4, arrives with a new manuscript about the phenomenon known as sunspots. Galileo refuses to look at it as he wants to stir up no more trouble. Galileo shows his servants that Aristotle's theory behind sinking or floating, it depends on whether an object can divide the water, is false by showing that an iron needle on a piece of paper indeed floats. Lodovico returns from his country and his vineyards. He has come to wed Virginia, who goes to get her wedding dress on to show Lodovico. Lodovico brings two pieces of news. One, Christopher Clavius is investigating the sunspots and the scientific community is averse with Thales. And two, the Pope is on his deathbed and is likely to be succeeded by Cardinal Barberini, a more progressive member of the church who used to be a mathematician. Galileo is overjoyed. He feels that with a less conservative Pope, he might take up astronomy again without threat. He admits that he is very interested in the new sunspot search research and would like to prove false the current theories about them. Galileo slyly asks Lodovico why he has delayed marrying his daughter for these eight years. Lodovico admits that he worried that Galileo might take up astronomy again if Lodovico was associated by marriage with Galileo's blasphemous studies. Lodovico might also be in danger from the church and the peasants on his land, which Lodovico calls mere animals may revolt. Galileo champions knowledge and truth over Ludovico's concerns and boldly decides to conduct his experiments anew with the telescope. His servants happily set up the telescope and his instruments. Ludovico calls off the marriage and decides never to see Virginia again. He leaves. Galileo begins his research. Virginia enters with her wedding dress on, sees Galileo at the telescope and realizes what has transpired. She faints. Scene 7 to 8 Analysis Bracht gives Little Monk a very generous and heartfelt monologue to establish the logic behind the forces conspiring against Galileo. In scene 6, we saw the religion in the form of an all power theocracy, which sees Galileo's research as a danger to the social order and thus a danger to their power. In scene 7, religion is given a much more benevolent face. Little Monk, like Galileo, is a scientist who has given up his occupation and his passion not for church power but because of his poor family and not wanting to shatter the very beliefs that keep them going. Here, Little Monk is appealing to Galileo's emotion rather than intellect and his pleading works. By scene 8, Galileo has abandoned astronomy for years and has taken up the very innocent and safe scientific research of objects floating on water. Scene 8 reveals a defeated Galileo, who has caved into a pressures of the church and Little Monk's emotional appeal. He has retained his prestige and is called the greatest living authority on physics by the community. And yet he is unhappy, as evidenced by the suddenness with which Galileo jumps at the chance to restart his astronomy research with the changing of the Pope. However, 
Galileo's decision does not come without a severe consequence. He loses a potential son-in-law in a time and culture when there is a heavy burden on a family to marry off its daughters. Thus, Galileo's decision has come at the expense of Virginia, who Galileo previously said is not very smart and whose window for marriage is drawing to a close. The audience is left to decide whether Galileo's decision is bold and courageous or inconsiderate and harmful to his family. Scenes 9 to 10. Scenes 9 to 10 summary. Scene 9. Scene 9 is a carnival scene not involving any of the primary characters. It depicts April Fool's Day, 1632. A ballad singer sings about the established order of the universe with the earth at the center and the strict hierarchy thereafter. Cardinals circle Pope, bishops circle cardinals, etc. The singer then states how Galileo's revelations have disrupted this view of the universe. Without this order, the singer sardonically sings in verse the peasants are likely to act out and do what they please a dwarf astronomer and other carnival dancers and performers act out the singer's words as they delight and amuse the gathered crowd the ballad singer reveals more consequences of this new disorder carpenters will build for themselves and or the church tenants might oust their lawns farmers may use their cow's milk to feed their babies instead of enrich the priest after this worst passage, a rich couple performers are harassed by the carnival actors who steal their fine garments. The ballad singer speaks to the ambivalence some may have at the prospect of a new age. Chaos may reign, but obviously there are many injustices that could be addressed with the toppling of the existing order. Finally, a parade flowed in the shape of Galileo is brought forth. Galileo is depicted holding out a Bible with its pages crossed out and shaking his head no. Galileo is pronounced as the Bible killer as the gathered crowd roars approval. Scene 10 Galileo and Virginia are at the Florence court waiting on Prince Medici. They are intentionally avo- uh, ignored by the rector. They encounter Matty, the iron founder, who confides that he is firmly on the Galileo side, the side of truth and knowledge. Matty characterizes Italy as a repressive, ignorant place. If the church ever acts against Galileo, Matty assures Galileo that he has many friends who would come to his aid. Galileo, for his part, wants no part of allies or people wishing him to be the face of a scientific revolution. He wants to be merely a scientist who reports his findings. The Inquisitor meets Galileo and says that the prince is unable to greet Galileo. Galileo offers his latest book on astronomy as a gift to the prince, but the Inquisitor refuses to accept the book. Instead, the Inquisitor states that the Florence court will no longer oppose a request from Rome for Galileo to be summoned and questioned for his beliefs. Scenes 9 to 10 Analysis Scene 9 is a departure from the rest of Galileo, a carnival scene not involving any of the principal characters. As such, it does not move the narrative forward or provide insight into any character. Instead, it is conceptual in nature. It broadens the consequences of Galileo's scientific revelations and applied it to Marxist class struggles. The ballad singer, the linchpin of this conceptual framework, first speaks of the old order known as a great chain of being in which there is rigid hierarchy which maintains social order. By taking earth from the center of this social order, Galileo in fact undermines the very foundation of society. Bragg being a Marxist specifically summons up the notion of dialectical materialism, the idea that history is a series of class struggles. In the new age, Galileo is ushering in opposed classes. The Marxist thesis and antithesis will clash, resulting in a new world order synthesis. Scene 10 represents Galileo at his most fearful and cowardly. However, even this cowardice is flavored with complexity. When Galileo is approached by Matty and assured he has powerful friends, Galileo shows timidity and fearfulness when he wishes not to be seen with Matty and wishes Matty would keep his voice down. However, Galileo also makes it clear he does not want to be the figurehead of a movement, not only because he fears the consequences, but because it is not his place as a scientist to lead. He wishes only to conduct his research 
and report his findings and then society can do with it what it will scenes 11 to 12 scenes 11 to 12 summary scene 11 barberini now the pope is preparing to make a public appearance and as the scene proceeds barberini gradually assumes the vestments of the pope barberini is resisting the inquisitor in regards to galileo's fate barberini indicated before as a former mathematician refuses to set myself up against the multiplication table by punishing galileo the inquisitor reminds barberini of the enormous burden he has and the vast amounts of people who are looking to him to guide them barberini seems to buckle under the tremendous pressure and but in the end he will not issue a condemnation of physical facts and neither will barberini condemn galileo to torture or death he allows galileo to undergo an inquisition but with no torture only the threat of torture the inquisitor agrees and leaves to arrange galileo's inquisition scene 12 andrea fadrosoni virginia and little monk are in rome in the garden of the florentine ambassador awaiting the outcome of galileo's trial inquisition Virginia takes the time to pray the other express their hope that Galileo will not recant in the name of truth an official comes to them and says that Galileo is expected to recant at 5 o'clock and that a bell will ring at that time as a sign of Galileo's repentance all the servants wait with bated breath for 5 o'clock minutes pass 5 o'clock passes and there is still no bell the servants take this as a sign that galileo refused to recant and they rejoice andrea and fedrosoni go so far as to proclaim that a new age of reason has begun with galileo's decision unfortunately the bell sounds and a town crier issues galileo's refutation of his astronomy theories his servants and daughter are heartbroken Galileo comes out and no one greets him everyone is ashamed and disappointed and cannot bear to look at him scenes 11 to 12 analysis the manner in which barberini gradually assumes the vestments of the pope throughout scene 11 is certainly intentional his vestments are not only a symbol of the burdens and responsibilities of the pope barberini now must carry they also symbolize a change in the man himself At the start of the scene Barberini is adamant and strong in his refusals to deny or punish Galileo and therefore the progress of science by the end dressed fully as a pope he agrees to Galileo's trial short of torture or death Scene 12 represents the climax of the play interestingly it hardly features galileo whose critical choice upon which most of the drama depends is made off screen and only represented by the tolling of the bell the choice whether galileo will falsely repent to save his life or refuse to bow to the church and face death in return for standing up for science and the truth has many consequences Galileo's personal reputation with his closest associates his gathered servants and his daughter is immediately at stake additionally Fedrosoni believes that nothing short of a new age of reason is dependent on Galileo's actions also as we have seen in the carnival scene and elsewhere Galileo's decision implicitly determines whether the repressive and unjust traditional social order will remain in place or whether it will be toppled Scenes 13 to 14. Scenes 13 to 14. Summary. Scene 13. Perhaps three or more years have passed. Galileo has become somewhat senile and nearly blind. He is guarded by a church official, and is essentially a prisoner. Virginia now forty cares for him. An anonymous person sends a goose to Galileo as a gift. Virginia gives orders for the chef to prepare the goose. Virginia has written down a dictation by Galileo concerning some minor unrest in Genoa and Galileo's advice to the archbishop about how to deal with it. Virginia thinks it as a fine letter and perfectly safe to send. There is a knock at the door and Andrea enters. Virginia is afraid 
Galileo will not want to see Andrea, but Galileo invites him in. Andrea reveals that science has ground to a standstill after Galileo's recantation, not only in Italy but across Europe. Virginia leaves to help the cook. Galileo alone with Andrea then confesses he has finished his discourse, his grand work about the cosmos. He had written it secretly, page by page, and deposited it in a hollowed-out globe on the desk. Andrea recovers it and sticks it under his coat. Andrea is elated. He takes his newest revelation to mean that Galileo fooled the church all along, that it was his plan to continue his work in secret, and that Galileo ultimately recanted only to live long enough to finish his masterwork. Galileo says that none of this is true. He had no plans to continue work and only continued to work out of irresistible habit. In fact, Galileo states that he is a sellout, a traitor, that he has betrayed his profession and that he was a coward who feared death. Andrea states that fear of death is human. Nevertheless, Galileo feels his research has been perverted to serve those in power and that he hadn't the will to fight the way he should have. Galileo colorfully states that the new age they envisioned has turned into a blood-spattered whore. Instead, Andrea leaves both with Galileo's discourse and a more optimistic view of things than Galileo has. Scene 14 Andrea is heading out of Italy and is waiting at the customs office. A customs officer inquires as to his possessions and particularly his books, and Andrea assures him that all his books contain are harmless mathematical formulas which satisfy the officials. As Andrea is waiting to be able to leave, he sees a group of children singing a nursery rhyme about a neighbor who they think is a witch. In her home, where they cannot see her, she is casting a witch-like shadow. Andrea takes one boy aside and asks how he is sure the woman is a witch. Andrea tells the boy he must trust his own eyes and not rumor or what the others say. Andrea lifts the boy so he can see over the woman's fence and the boy sees only a regular old lady stirring porridge and not a witch on the broomstick, like the words he was singing. However, the boy goes back to the children and joins in their chant about the witch once again. The customs officer laughs at Andrea's folly. The play ends with a sort of extra textual chorus, warning the audience to guard the light of science well or else it will spiral downward and consume us all. Scenes 13 to 14 Analysis The play has taken a tragic turn as Galileo has been revealed to be a coward with his act of false repentance. By repenting Galileo has unseen what he has seen with his own eyes, a ludicrous situation as pointed out by Galileo's servant in scene 12. As a physical reminder of Galileo acquiring intellectual blindness, Galileo in his final years is nearly blind. His blindness is directly tied to his scientific pursuits. His daughter warns him against writing anything down because it worsens his eyes. But in fact, Galileo has been writing in secret. His discourse smartly Brack provides the audience with a false sense of hope in this scene. Andrea is overjoyed that Galileo has been writing in secret, considering it Galileo's final act of defiance an indication that Galileo had the last laugh in regards to his dealings with the church. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Galileo has finished his discourse out of a sort of habit, an addiction he cannot stop. There is nothing more lofty to it. In Galileo's final major speech, he declares himself a poor scientist who has betrayed his field. Scene 14 rings the final bell of pessimism. Andrea pulls a boy aside and shows him the woman uh, the mob of children had been demonizing as a witch is merely an old woman stirring porridge. The boy, like Galileo, acquires his own blindness in refusing to believe even his own eyes, rejoining the mob. Brecht's final statement indicates that science is at constant odds with the ignorance inherent in human nature. 
So students, we are done with the summary and critical analysis of this drama Life of Galileo by Bertrand Brecht. This is a very interesting drama as it gives us the scientific information and facts about Galileo and his work. I hope you have understood it. Comment below if you have any questions. I'll be glad to answer you all. Till then students, this is your host Samia Omar signing off from MA English Part 1 and 2 notes. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe my channel for more informative and quality notes videos. Also press the bell icon for notifications so that you don't miss any video. Take care and Allah Hafiz.